you may start yeah. okay sure so hello guys um, i'm dr dure and i'm a mentor from med institute so i'll be talking regarding the whole plap pathway how you can you know plan your journey what will be the cost of the individual exam and uh, what are the best resources to ace exam and what is the timeline okay so let's start with introduction what are the learning objectives so first of all route to plap pathway um you need to take oet plap 1 and plap 2 but do not worry as we are going to discuss each part in detail shortly before we start discussing regarding the plap pathway i would want you to know uh, who are we so we are from med institutes med institutes is a trusted e learning platform which is empowering doctors not only doctors from pakistan but globally so at med institutes we go beyond conventional study materials and our platform is your one stop destination for personalized assistance and insights tailored to your exam journey um that's not only limited for plap but we also deal with mrcog mrcem mrcpch or other post graduate exam and merin students is committed to empowering you with the knowledge and the skills that you really need for the success so there's some exciting news as well for you guys is that we're on the brink of introducing mock exams also for plap 2 and you know this going to be an amazing feature for all of you guys who are really wanting to you know ace their exams in the first go so now starting with plap what is plap plap is the professional and linguistic assessment board test or the plap test helps us to make sure doctors who qualified abroad have the right knowledge and skills to practice medicine in the uk so it's actually a gateway to practice medicine in the uk or you can say a gateway to your gmc registration so there is there are certain steps and there are some prerequisites of this exam and we will discuss everything in detail so plap actually comprises of two parts so there's one theoretical part part 1 which is a written multiple choice exam with 180 single best answer questions or you also call them multiple choice questions and then part 2 is a practical objective structured clinical exam known as oski and you'll need to pass both parts before you can apply for registration with a license to practice medicine in the uk so part 1 is a theoretical exam and part 2 is a clinical uh, and objective structured clinical based exam which is an oski and part 2 can only be taken in the uk manchester and it's not um, i mean you cannot take anywhere else in the world it's just done in the manchester so the, and there are two centers for taking this exam uh hardman square and hardman street as you know the plab is becoming a very popular exam for doctors who want to pursue their career in the uk due to many good reasons of course but there's of course you know there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty as well um you know on uh, there's a confusion on where to start how to start what are the best resources and there are so many videos and so many resources but we are uh, literally very confused on you know what's uh, the right pathway and what's the right thing that we need to begin with so i have compiled things for those in need and who want to prepare for plap 1 in 3 months or maybe 5 months that's totally up to them and also plap 2 in 2 months so i've written plap 1 in 3 months because this is the minimal time that you need to uh, because whenever you're planning for any exam whether it's plap 1 or plap 2 or it's mrcem or any other exam you need to uh, be a bit more realistic in the preparation so this is the least minimum time that one should give that is 3 min 3 months 
and plap 2 uh, can be done in 4 to 6 weeks or 4 to 8 weeks that literally depends on person to person so now coming to how you can plan your uh, plan your plap journey so first of all it starts with getting a medical degree finishing primary medical qualification and you can start your plap journey while you're still a medical student but you need to uh, you know, finish the whole uh, MBBS and then only you can start your uh, PLAP pathway. But um, no one has stopped you in going through the question banks, uh, you know, throughout your MBBS. You can do that. But you can take this exam only after MBBS. After MBBS, you're going to complete your internship. It makes you eligible for full GMC registration. And in the long run, it gets troublesome for IMGs uh, to get into, you know, foundation training. So it's always better and recommended to complete your internship. Because without in internship, you're going to, you know, get into FI1. That is the house job. If you've done your house job in your hometown, it makes you eligible to enter into FI2 training. Foundation year two. Now, after this... So the prerequisite I was talking regarding the prerequisite of lab one. So what are the prerequisites of lab one? So first of all, you have to make account in the general medical council. That's a board that registers doctor who wants to practice medicine in the UK. So you have to make your account and you will give all your details regarding your medical degree, your, uh, your internship and everything, your personal details your national ID, you're going to give all those details and then you will make an account. You will be assigned a GMC registration number. And uh, with that GMC registration number, you're also going to book OET. So before PLAB1, to get eligible to take PLAB1, you need to pass IELTS or OET. So th that's totally optional. That's up to you, whether you want to go for IELTS or you want to go for OET. And the required score for IELTS is 7.5. And I'll discuss this as well in detail. After that, after taking PLAB1, and if you're past PLAB1, I uh, generally recommend do not rush into things. Do not rush in, you know, okay, getting the EPIC verification done. Just wait for your results. When you're past PLAB1, go for EPIC verification, and which will verify your medical degree. And they, uh, it's like a two-step process. They'll first of all uh, do an interview with you from California. This is ECFMG certification. And they're going to ask you for certain dollars, which is almost like 50,000 rupees in Pakistani. Uh, around $250 uh, it takes to uh, for the whole EPIC verification. After this, uh, then you can, uh, because uh, if you pass your PLAB1, then you can, you know, plan your PLAB2. But before that, you need to, you know, apply for the visit visa. That's also, again, another chapter, a full-length topic regarding how you can plan your visit visa, what are the requirements, and what documents you need and we can you know plan another session for that so after that uh, when you've planned your visit visa you've booked your plap 2 exam and then um, you have to sit for your plap 2 and if you've passed your plap 2 then you'll apply for gmc registration and after you have done with your gmc registration you will apply for the job in the nhs which is national health services Any questions so far? Okay. Um, we have questions in our chat box. Okay. Uh, okay, so you guys uh, have questions in the end. That's fine. That's totally okay. So, um, OET and IELTS. First, so, so the first step is OET and IELTS, as I've mentioned. Okay. So that's totally a personal choice. If you think that your English language skills are exceptional and you're very confident in your English language, then you can go for IELTS. Uh, specifically, I would uh, say if you're very confident in the essay writing area. So then, uh, because uh, 
the most uh, challenging part of IELTS is neither reading, neither uh, neither listening, neither speaking. It's actually the writing part, where most of the people, uh, most of the students, they struggle passing the writing of IELTS. Uh, it's not that expensive, but literally I've seen so many candidates giving IELTS six times, seven times, eight times. So it's better to, you know, give OET a bit extra, but it's a better exam. And honestly, you guys can, uh, you know, clear this exam in one go with the right guidance, of course. So whether it's IELTS or OET, it's mandatory to give one of these exams to prove that you have a good hold on your English language skills. So pick one and start preparing it at once if you're planning to give class that we've discussed already. So what is OET? So I'm going to talk about more about OET because I'm a bit OET pro here. Uh, the reasons I'll give you because uh, first of all, when you're uh, talking about OET, and IELTS. IELTS is totally an English language thing. So where even when you're preparing for IELTS, you won't be that much interested in the whole preparation process because it's not really related to you. Because it's totally an English language thing, right? But when you're preparing for OET, the best part that I loved about OET is when you're preparing for reading or you're preparing for um, listening or writing or whatever, it's not only uh, your preparation for an English language test, but you, you know, you're uh, actually going through a lot of research materials. You're going through a lot of topics, a uh, lot of diseases, and it actually solidify your concepts, which is related to your medical field. So I really recommend people to go um, and to choose OET over IELTS. That's my personal choice. You guys can follow whatever you want. So the Occupational English Test, um, OET, is an English language test that ass assesses the English language proficiency of overseas trained healthcare professionals seeking to register and practice in an English language, English speaking environment, which is probably the UK in our case. So what is the minimum requirement? You must, must achieve a score of 7.0 in all sections or 7.5 overall if you set the IELTS, or grade B, which is 350 score in all areas, if you set the OET. So the catch point here is the GMC requirements, according to the GMC requirement, you need to pass reading, writing, listening, and speaking in one go. So uh, there's no choice, like, um, if you're because in our uh, people, uh, you know, usually choose IELTS because they think that, okay, even if they failed uh, writing, we can reattempt writing only. So according to the GMC new guidelines, you have to uh, pass all the modules in one go. So there are four parts, uh, either it's IELTS or OET, uh, four parts, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And you get, uh, you need to, uh, score 350 in each module, which is grade B or 7.5 overall or 7.0 in each. Okay. So uh, when it comes to preparation, is if someone has taken IELTS before, it becomes a little bit easier for them as two domains of OET are similar to that of IELTS. But I would recommend you to choose wisely whenever you're going for your exams whether it's your preparation materials, whether it's your selection between IELTS and OET, guys, please choose wisely. The difference comes in writing and speaking, as I've mentioned. It should take a month roughly if you're practicing daily and giving each domain a week, but it totally depends on your English language skills. I've seen people uh, clearing this exam in 10 to 15 days as well. Personally, I took 20 days, but I studied a lot. So that's uh, totally like... You know, it depends on person to person. However, you are comfortable, you can take this exam according to your timeline. So now we'll discuss slab one in detail. So slab one, uh, what are we going to discuss? As we mentioned already before, that uh, what is slab one? We'll discuss the exam structure of the slab one. What are the best resources for slab one exam? This is the, I would say, 
this this will be the diamond thing for you guys in this lecture because this is the most important thing uh, whenever you're preparing for any exam you need to know what are the best resources for a certain exam then after that we're going to discuss how you can how you can find your club one exam center and what to bring on the day of the club one exam and how you can plan your preparation so as i've already mentioned that it's in 180 single best answer questions and is a computer marked written multiple choice uh, type exam and you'll be given a short scenario followed by a question what is the single most likely diagnosis and they'll be given five options okay underneath uh, a b c d e and you need to choose one single best answer and there is no negative marking so okay now we'll discuss this thing in detail because it's really important what are the best resources so there are many resources labable med revisions lab keys lab verse gmc blueprint and many other uh, resources as well but these are the top five resources that is used for lab one So guys mark my words that labable is considered as bible for lab one like in usmle u word is considered bible for usmle so labable is considered as bible for lab one so you need to this is a question bank and it has actually 2500 to 3000 questions and you need to cover all this question bank and it totally depends on your speed on your timeline and also on your schedule how you are maintaining your day to day activities so how you you can plan your preparation wisely it's recommended to actually finish uh, one question bank one read in maximum 20 days or you can finish it in 30 days and once you finished your uh, labable question bank you can switch to med revisions i would recommend you to go through both of them the reason why is labable is a basic question bank okay so believe me or not 60 to 70 percent questions will come from labable but they won't be exactly like the questions that are written in labable of course they will be twisted so you need to solidify your concepts after your you know is labable you've done your mocks and everything and you're very confident that you know uh, almost like 70 to 80% stuff you've crammed and you know things from labable now this is the time to uh, you know upgrade your knowledge upgrade your skills uh, regarding understanding of a topic you need to go through med revisions and med revisions believe me or not it's enough enough because there's so many links uh, also given uh, under each question regarding uh, a topic ck or, or furthermore if you feel that you're really confused in one topic you can uh, go through nhs guidelines you can go through um, uk cks guidelines as well and it's recommended to go through the guidelines of course always whenever you confuse in one topic always go through the guidelines okay so then there is plap keys okay guys so plap keys is bit overrated um the reason why uh, people love going through plap keys is because it's uh, too much colored and uh, highlights and it's nicely written but personally i didn't went through plap keys the reason why i didn't went to plap keys is because labable and plap keys is exactly the same so it's better to go through you know one resource rather than going to two or three or four or five resources so labable will be your main resource and after that to upgrade your knowledge you need to go through med revisions okay it's a bit difficult question bank and after that uh, you will uh, go through plap verse okay so i'll tell you how you can uh, prepare uh, for lab 1 how you can start your preparation so um, like there are certain topics table of contents i'll share the syllabus with you guys as well but like if you're going through cardiology or if you're going through neurology or whether it's gastroenterology first of all read it from lab verse 
Okay, guys. One thing I need to tell you that flap keys and flap bars is you do not need to buy it. Okay. So offline, uh, uh, I mean offline um, subscriptions are available. You can get offline flap keys and flap bars, but flappable and mid revisions you need to buy these uh, question marks. There is no other option. Okay. But flap keys and flap bars you do not need to buy. Everything is available offline. So first of all, you will uh, you know get the offline subscription of Flabbers, and you will go through a topic like if it's a, if you're going through cardiology, you will read cardiology, and then you will uh, uh, go on attempting MCQs for Flab One. I mean, sorry, Flabbable, and then you can switch to med revisions. Okay. So how you can plan your preparations? First of all. Uh, i would recommend you to have a study partner whenever you're planning your preparation because it's really motivating to study with uh, you know your partners uh, take them as accountability partners as well as your motivators as well and it's easier it doesn't look too much um, tiring um, it doesn't feel too much tiring when you're studying with your partner and it's uh, highly recommended to join a whatsapp group or any other platform uh, like telegram with active groups for flab one preparation make your own study plan and whenever it comes to making your study plan i always recommend to make practical plans do not be uh, uh, do not make non practical plans like do not try to uh, you know that um, okay i'll cover cardiology in one single day no you can't do that so make a uh, practical study plans as i mentioned that first of all you will go through theories either you can go through flap keys or flap bars and then you will attempt to mcqs um while attempting mcqs i highly recommend to note down the wrongs wrong questions your wrong answers note down make your short notes okay and the difficult questions or the question that are totally ununderstandable and you're not understanding the concept flag them so that you can review them again and again okay so um, also make sure while making your plan to finish a week earlier as there are days where you're not able to complete your task and sticking to two months plan is very important here the third point most important and i highly recommend this and this is uh, what what you can say extremely important part of your preparation is revision you have to revise every single day no matter what depending on your schedule either take 15 minutes out 10 minutes out or 30 minutes you have to revise the topics that you've studied before 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes before bedtime and if you do not have that much time then you can revise those topics 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes before bedtime okay so then the most important final thing comes um, after you've completed your question bank flabbable and flab uh, i mean mid revisions you have to take mocks mocks uh, do not underestimate the mocks as they're preparing you for your real exam So mocks are actually um, exam like a uh, paper. It's exactly the same, and you can literally, uh, I mean, simulate the whole scenario how you'll be sitting. You can, you know, uh, take the GNC blueprint and start taking mocks. So um, it's actually uh, said that uh, you have to finish your flabbable uh, mock. 30 minutes or 1 hour before because you know all the questions right so you'll be able to finish 1 hour or 30 minutes before but uh, it's not really necessary do not worry if you're not achieving this speed uh, after 2 to 3 marks you will be able to achieve that speed as well and your target score should be 80 to 90 percent okay guys as i've not only experienced success in this journey i've also experienced failure so i couldn't pass my flab 1 the first time and i do not shy in telling this because it was a journey for me and it was an experience for me and that's the reason why i'm giving you these this experience it's it's a really i mean uh, i struggled a lot 
for preparing plan one because no one was there to guide me when i was preparing okay so i was so much confused in different resources i didn't had any idea how i can prepare how to go about it what is the best resource how to plan it and the first time okay so there is a myth guys regarding cap that it's an easy exam believe me you will fail if you will consider it as it an easy exam so do not consider this an easy or a cake piece exam no exam is a cake piece first and for most this is the thing that you need to learn okay so because uh, where i was studying or doing house job people they they are liars as well sometimes and they they told me that oh plab is not a difficult exam it's an easy exam you can do it but as i didn't prepared i didn't know anything about it so i just prepared month for this exam and i couldn't pass so please do not do this mistake uh, give proper time so that you can prepare it in one go and you can pass it in one go okay so table of content and syllabus uh, so emergency medicine hematology respiratory medicine pediatrics obs and gynae toxicology cardiology pharmacology endocrinology ophthalmology nephrology ent and these are some other topics that will be uh, that are actually assessed in plab 1 so um, 50% or uh, you can say like uh, 60 to 70% of topics are from medicine right and then it comes general surgery and peds and gynae and obs all all these topics are assessed okay there is a very small chunk of epidemiology and genetics and all these uh, psychiatry and there's like very small chunk of these topics uh, do not underestimate this small chunk because at the end you'll be struggling to pass the exam by one mark okay so it's really sad when you fail by one mark only okay so do not underestimate any of the topic and you have to ace each and every topic okay so do not leave any topic on choice i would say okay like if you think that okay genetics is a not a very important topic there'll be only two questions from genetics no it's not like that because that's there is no certain quantity though genetics will be a, uh, you know smaller component but you never know they give five questions from genetics and you will be struggling at the end if you will leave that so i would recommend do not leave anything on choice do everything okay so this is a rough plan uh, the, the data entered here is totally a dummy data okay so uh, this is just to give you an idea how you can plan your preparation like uh, just count the pages of plab keys topics or you can count the pages of plab words as well i personally use plab words so if there are 150 pages in respiratory and then there are count the number of mcqs as well 150 mcqs in respiratory then uh, take at least 3 days to cover this so try to make um, a target of completing 50 mcqs per day okay so this should be your target and accordingly you can plan the whole schedule according to your timeline now uh, finding your plab 1 exam center how you can find your plab 1 exam center you will be sent an email telling you where to go and what time you must be there and try not to be late in any circumstances because you won't be able to i mean no excuses for coming late the exam will last 3 hours try to go i would recommend try to go an hour or at least uh, an hour or you can go 2 hours before as well and do not uh, study a lot the last day of your exam especially on your exam day do not go through the topics try to relax as much as you can on the exam day you won't be allowed to leave the exam hall in the first and last half hour of the exam so keep that in mind when you consider going to bathroom breaks into your exam time So now, what are the things provided for the Plab One exam? You will be given a uh, one A4 size booklet. I will show the front cover of that booklet as well with you guys. And this booklet has all the questions and it also normal lab values at the end. So you do not need to worry uh, regarding cramming the lab values. No, 
lab values will be given but it's always better to you know uh, learn some important values so that you do not struggle finding for the normal lab values because uh, you have one minute for each question so try to be wise in that so each page contains four to five questions so it's quite a thick booklet containing 180 questions the questions uh, have ecg and photos um, are on a separate paper tucked in with its corresponding question okay so this was a very important point that you guys need to know because sometimes people and it happened to me as well in my real exam that i forgot that there is a separate paper tucked in with its corresponding question i forgot seeing that paper and i missed ecg findings or there were some photos given and i missed those photos because i was unaware of this point so you do not do this mistake okay because now you know that uh, there's ecgs and photos they are on a separate separate paper tucked in with its corresponding question so if you enter more than one answer on the answer sheet you will gain no mark for the question okay and there are also no negative marking as i've mentioned before as well so so the responses uh, come put down on a response the exam paper also includes ecgs x rays and different images like dermatology uh, you know rash images or if there is any mole or melanoma these images will be attached as well you will be given one double sided answer sheet at the exam with instructions on how to complete it you must complete the information required at the top of the sheet and it will uh, i will show you how it will look like so what to bring with on the exam day of lab 1 so you really not to bring a lot of things with you uh also i would recommend not to bring you know the books and the notes with you even if you have short notes on the mobile uh save that that's fine but do not you know bring a lot of notes with you along because it's just going to make panic and panic is really bad for you either it's lab 1 or lab 2 so please make sure to bring your passport and if you're taking your exam in your own country you will bring your uh, cnic national insurance id and your booking confirmation try to make a uh, okay so booking confirmation is very important so try to make a hard copy of your booking confirmation along with that that's totally optional because generally they, you will be given hp pencils eraser and a pencil sharpener by them but uh, in some time sometimes some in some centers they might not give you but that's highly unlikely but in case uh, just in case keep these things with you and do not bring your bag phone study materials do not uh, bring anything valuable okay so also you'll uh, uh, there's a gmc blueprint uh, you will uh, you can just have a read regarding that blueprint and also uh, you will be uh, you know sent an email as well and everything will be written on that email what are the do's and don'ts what are the requirements of the exam and what to bring what not to bring the timings are also written on the email the center uh, everything okay so uh, guys this is exactly the paper that you're going to give uh, you're going to get in your exam okay it's exactly the same so you will be writing your name in this name area you will be writing your city in this area you will be writing the date and write your gmc number clearly there should be no mistake in writing your gmc number otherwise your result will be affected so everything is written you can you know go through the detail please use a pencil only on this answer sheet this form will be scanned and electronically marked so do not fold or crease this sheet the answer sheet is double sided contain 200 or 180 uh, single best answer questions for each questions you will be asked to choose one option from the list there's 200 written but it's actually 180 so give one answer to each question do not underline or do uh, put a dot or do it like this they'll give you an example you have to do it mark it like this okay so 
the next topic will be your after your done your plab one your past your plab one in one go then comes the big exam plab two <laughs> believe me it's a very tricky exam there are so i mean there's so much into it there are a lot of do's and don'ts people consider it a it's like it's a subjective exam as you know you're not really sure how they are marking you but uh, we will have uh, you know another session on this as well and it's like a vast topic lab 2 is a whole you know it's a very tiring and a rough journey because a lot of finances are involved in lab 2 plus you know you're taking this exam out of your country you have to travel <clears throat> you have to properly plan you have to apply your visit visa and there's a lot to do in this it's like a very heavy exam believe me people think that lab 1 is easy no lab 2 is easy lab 1 is bit difficult but i consider lab 2 is the most difficult exam it is not it is not but if you do not know how to prepare then it is okay so lab 2 part 2 of the test is a practical assessment and takes the form of an objective structured clinical examination so in this exam they're not actually they're not only uh, i mean uh, checking you on your clinical knowledge and clinical skills they're checking you on your personality as well so interpersonal skills there's like four marks for interpersonal skills which includes how you're talking how you're coming to your cubicle how you're sitting in front of a patient if you are moving your hands everything is being marked believe me and a slight mistake you do they're just going to struck you off because there's a lot of competition believe me or not but i consider though it is not a competitive exam but plus minus you say it is a competitive exam because there is no set criteria even if you go in the general medical council gmc website there is there is no set criteria for pass there's no pass mark for each station every exam has different pass mark so you're going you're go you're actually being marked against your uh, peers okay so there's relative marking in this so if others are performing really well and if you have done a slight mistake only this that was not a big mistake but that mistake will actually cost you your exam cost you 1000 pounds the whole visit full lab too so there's a lot to tell about this but okay let's just uh, talk uh, regarding the basics as we can see that there are three uh, domains your every oski station will be marked against these domains data gathering there's four marks clinical management four marks interpersonal skills four marks and following will be the skill set area uh, that you will have to portray, portray like how you are beginning your consultation how overall your consultation is if you're giving a diagnosis to the patient there is there's one mark of diagnosis as well because if your diagnosis is incorrect believe me or not you're not going to pass that station even if you're giving a provisional that So you are going to give provisional diagnosis, of course, but even if you're given a, a differential diagnosis and it's a right set of uh, diagnosis, then you'll be marked for that station. But if it's if you're making a blunder, you're giving a wrong diagnosis, then you're not going to get marks for that station. So there are sixteen stations, okay, and there are two rest stations, and you have to pass. 10 stations out of 16 stations uh before covid 19 there were 18 stations but now after covid 19 there are only 16 stations and the exam is of 3 hours so and uh, it's actually 1000 pounds you have to pay 9 906 pounds to sit for this exam consultation and you'll be marked against diagnosis if you're giving an examination proper investigations plan what plan are you giving what are your findings what were the issues concerns 
I okay. So the most important part of lab two and your consultation will be if you are exploring the ideas of the patient, concerns of the patient, and expectations of the patient. So this is called icing the patients. If you are exploring uh, all of this, then you're good to go. So ice is very very important in each and every station. So I generally say that there's <coughs> a triangle of three things that you need to do before you leave any cubicle so there are three things that is a must number one is that you have to explore the psychosocial aspect of the patient because in flap 2 they are not really bothered how much do you know about a disease they are really bothered how much you are concerned regarding the patient and if you explore the psychosocial element because in the uk they really give importance to the psychosocial aspect so this is a must 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 for plat to all of the stations psychosocial element so effect of symptoms on their day to day activities and then idea concerns and expectation i think the patient and the last and most important thing red flags warning signs so before you leave the cubicle you have to safety net like you have to discuss the warning signs with the patient regarding that particular disease okay then uh, they'll be checking your language if you're talking appropriately or not if you're listening to the patient uh, okay so listening how it will be assessed like if the patient have told you one thing if you have asked like an open ended question to the patient like okay can you tell me more about it and if they told you everything in one go and you're again asking that question you will be marked negatively for data gathering you won't uh, you will be uh, literally struggling that station because it means that you're not listening to the patient they've already told you one thing in one go but as you were not listening so you didn't know so it's a lot of practice guys it's a lot of practice and it comes with practice okay then you will give a management plan and then how you will build a rapo and you need to finish the data gathering and you need to give the management according along with you know discussing the warning signs risk factors you need to give the general tips make a follow up plan with the patient and also you are going to offer them leaflets or some reading materials within 7 minutes and 30 seconds okay so there are 8 minutes for one cubicle one uh, station but i would say that these 8 minutes they are not 8 minutes they are 7 minutes and 30 seconds because 30 seconds you need to enter the station you need to say hi to the examiner hello to the patient and you need to loudly uh, tell your gmc number your name in front of the examiner and then you have to take a seat sit and then only you can start the station so it literally takes 30 minutes to open the door come in the cubicle talk to the examiner talk to the patient and then start your station okay so this will be exactly when you'll get your plap 2 result this will be the pdf area that you're going to get so station 1 2 3 4 like station 1 is regarding edema nodosum okay so this is a dermatological condition okay so consider if it's a video call consultation and you have not started your consultation there's a, an approach for each station if it's a video call consultation there's a proper approach for how you can talk to a patient on a video call if there's a telephonic consultation there's a proper approach how you can talk to a patient on the telephone if there is another consultation whether it is uh, like may be face to face consultation and there's a proper approach for that as well so if you are not following that approach you are going to get tick in consultation or if you're um, you know if you're not structured and you're just going here and there you will get a tick in consultation and then listening as i've mentioned okay so getting tick is not a good thing <laughs> believe me so as many ticks as you uh, have it's a bad thing getting a tick is a bad thing it means that you have this is your problem area so if there's no tick in diagnosis examination findings issues language it means that 
everything is fine here but your problem was your consultation so this is believe me or not this is a very good uh, result strategy that they are going to give you not only they are going to give you marks against each station but they are also going to discuss the problem area so if you uh, i mean just be open minded even if you failed your exam in first attempt do not feel like oh you know probably they are just um, strictly marking it's a luck based exam do not think like that focus on your mistakes see where you were wrong and try to improve those mistakes like if you got a tick on consultation try to learn all the approaches towards each station try to improve your mistakes and try to first of all uh, take a guidance in a way that you do not need to reset your exam right that's the best strategy to go about it so as a uh, domains i have already discussed that uh, you will get uh, four marks uh, are given for data gathering four marks for your management four marks for your ips so data gathering you will get you will be assessed against history taken physical examination practical procedures or investigations leading to a diagnosis in the clinical management skills how you are formulating a diagnosis this is very important like you cannot just give a diagnosis that way okay you need to sometimes justify your diagnosis as well like you can say as um, uh, mr smith as you've mentioned that uh, in the history that you had cup and uh, plus your smoking for a long period of time and your passing blood as well uh, in the sputum so it seems that you are having a condition that is known as lung cancer so just pause okay and then they are going to uh, give you i mean uh, their response so this is a way how you can formulate a diagnosis i will discuss everything in detail uh in uh, the later se uh, i mean sessions but okay so explaining something to the patient formulating a management plan this is extremely important and then interpersonal skills how you approach the station whether you establish a rapport with the patient how you use open uh, i mean um questions and close ended questions you how you're involving the patient believe me or not involving the patient is extremely important because they're not looking for candidates who have crammed everything and they're doing a verbal diarrhea okay so you need to involve the patient stay i mean make the patient connected throughout the consult consultation you have to lock into the eyes of the patient and they have to connect with you this should be there okay you have to have that energy you have to have that passion in you so that the patient can connect with you okay and then you have to demonstrate how professional you are and you have to also understand the ethical principles also because only if you will understand the basic ethical principle because see most of the asians we are not following those ethical principles we are not dealing that way with the patient that's why we struggle passing our exams so it's believe me or not a very different exam from your basic exams or from any other exam that you're taking in your home country so also there is clinical evaluation this is all taken from the gmc website so they'll be checking your uh, they'll be you will be assessed how you are checking your how you are checking the patient's blood pressure how you are performing the venipuncture how you are inserting a cannula into a peripheral vein so uh, calculating the drug dosage because there will be some pediatric scenarios where you have to calculate the drug dosage so you will be assessed against that as well how you are giving iv injections okay so this is something really serious that they are actually checking uh, how you are giving iv injections in the simen so there is one station of emergency treatment and they are going to assess all of these things like how you are you know putting the cuff if you're measuring the blood pressure in a right way or not if you're checking the doses in a right way or not mixing and injecting drugs into an iv bag this is also going to be assessed giving intramuscular and subcutaneous injections this can come as teaching stations as well 
then basic cardiopulmonary resuscitation, suturing, interpreting uh, ECG, X-rays, results of other investigations, interpreting, interpreting basic respiratory function tests, the lung function test. Like uh, you can get another station, like a full fledged station on spirometry on peaklometer. And then uh, you have to perform urinary catheterization, taking a cervical smear. This there will be another station, and how you can safely dispose the sharps. If you even believe me, if you've done everything right and you've missed the safety disposal of the sharps, you'll you'll not pass the station. Okay, so interpersonal skills involves explaining a diagnosis to the patient, investigation, treatment, involving the patient in the decision making, communicating with the relatives, communicating with healthcare professionals, uh, and also it involves checking how you can communicate with your colleagues in the hospital, how you can uh, communicate with your nurse colleague, how you will communicate with your consultants, how you will communicate with the doctors in the hospital environment. So they're going to assess you in each and every domain, believe me. And how you will break, there'll be one scenario, but no, that's not a must. It's totally up to them how they design the paper, okay? So breaking bad news, how you will break the bad news to the patient. Providing clear, legible written instructions where appropriate, like if there is a prescription scenario. Seeking informed consent, clarification for an invasive, procedure, obtaining consent for a post-mortem, dealing with anxious patients, giving instructions on discharge from hospital, giving advice on lifestyle, health, promotion, risk factors, and other things also. Tell the examiner what you're doing and why uh, you're doing this if you're in an anatomical model station. Okay. So uh, before I end this uh, PLAP2 Think, I just want to give a quick recap of how this exam works. So you will uh, be having 18 scenarios, okay, 16 uh, stations actual, two rest stations. So I want to uh, tell you uh, where to focus and how to, you know, prepare. So see, five stations are going to come. Number one is cement. It's a must, must station in each and every exam. It is going to come. One station will be prescription writing. One station plus minus, it sometimes comes, sometimes not. That's a teaching station. Two or three stations will be combined stations, like you will be uh, doing examination, taking the history, and also telling the management as well. So it's a bit extremely challenging scenario because you're doing your data gathering as well you're doing your examination as well and at the end you have to tell the diagnosis you have to explain your diagnosis you have to give the whole management plan to the patient okay so these five stations it's easy to pass these stations okay because there are not a lot of stations uh, regarding all these stations so it's easy to pass so how to prepare and how to pass PAP2 is get a very good hold of this station. Prepare it extremely very well. And in this way, uh, you can, you know, lock your five stations, okay? Then um, 60 to 70, like eight to nine stations are from counseling and ethics. That's a bigger chunk, okay? So eight to nine stations are coming from counseling and ethics. So you need to focus more on how your counseling a patient and you know ethical principles and then like two or three questions will come from medicine okay and then one from peds one station will come from obs and gynae one station will come from surgery and then one station will be from derma enti and um then there's like okay peds gynae uh, and surgery and there's psychiatry one station will come from psychiatry so this makes the whole like 16 cases. So there is a no, there's no set pattern. Anything can come from anywhere. Sometimes they might give you three cases from peace. Sometimes they might give you 
six cases from medicine and uh, only two or three cases from counseling or ethics that totally depends on uh, you know the examiner and the person who is making the exam paper okay so there is no set pattern but the five stations like simen they are going to assess prescription they are going to assess combined station they are going to assess so these four make sure that you prepare extremely very well and you pass all these stations if you have locked all these stations then passing the rest will not be will not that be difficult and you'll end up passing the tab 2 in first go okay so guys uh, when you have passed your tab 2 you've aced your stations passed your exam take a relief and enjoy go out and uh, enjoy your free time and then you will apply for gmc registration so now uh, for applying gmc registration there's one thing that's uh, probably missing here is that you need to have your valid oit or ice so you need to pass your plab 2 within 3 years of passing your plab 1 and your oit or uh, ielts is i think valid for 3 years now so if you have applied your gmc registration within 3 months of passing plab 2 uh your you can like um, i mean your oit will be valid for 3 years and you can go on with gmc registration but if your uh, oit or ielts is more than 3 years old then you need to retake your oit and uh, uh, so you need to have your primary medical qualification you have to have your good standing certificate you have to have your epic verification and your experience certificates and your other uh, you know personal details and then you will apply for gmc registration and you will come on the register and after that you will start applying for the jobs okay guys uh, that was it till now so we are open for any questions if there are any questions um i wanted to ask what is what do you mean by a mm. uh, good character certificate uh good standing certificate so uh, actually the good standing certificate is um a certificate that is issued by uh, which country you are from pakistan okay so pakistan uh, so a good standing certificate will be given by uh, pmdc so like you cleared your uh, qualification you have done your mbbs you have done your house job and you have your pmdc registration right because nowadays you guys have to go for nle exam as well to get your registration right okay uh, what yeah. if you only had like the provisional license even if you have provisional license i think uh, pmdc will be able to give you good standing certificate but uh, you need to ask uh, you need to contact pmdc what's the requirement of giving the good standing certificate but the basic requirement is that you need to have your uh, license to practice in pakistan and they're going to give you good standing against that license and that's i think you need to pay 5000 rupees and uh, you book your good standing online and you will receive your good standing online as well you do not need to visit islamabad and visit the pmdc office okay and one more thing ex by experience certificate do you mean like the house job one yeah 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 house job certificates and make sure uh, uh, also there is a certain criteria for your house job you should not have a lot of uh, you not a lot in fact you should not have any gap between the house job period because otherwise the gmc will question you and why you have this gap and your the registration process can be affected so try to complete your house job in one go try not to have any gap between like 6 months 3 months your medicine 3 months your surgery and 3 months allied medicine allied surgery this is the pattern accepted for house job any other questions
so guys please do give me the feedback as well regarding the session how was the session ma'am we have questions in the chat box okay i i was just about to open the chat box okay. you can book lab 1 without passport you will present sure cnic when sitting in the exam when you are giving it in your own country but you absolutely need it for lab 2 i made my jnc account based on my cnic only okay okay that does not seems like a question okay screen is visible uh, hello i have started a few hours a day for now i am doing lab keys shall i switch to med divisions next month okay so uh, it really depends on um, how much hold you have your of your plabable uh, i would recommend you to only switch to med revisions once you have a very good hold of plabable try to make a very good hold of plabable first and then only switch to med revisions i know people have passed uh, plab 1 just by plabable as well so do not a worry about that but just to be on a safe side you can it's always better to switch to attributions as well how to prepare for plab 1 from first year mbbs which subjects are most important so um i won't recommend you to start preparation um from your first year mbbs instead if you want to i mean uh prepare for something that's usmle you can start from first year mbbs from from your foundation years but plab is actually generally more clinical based it's not you know theoretical so i recommend uh, preparing for plab 1 from your fourth year and final year only and you can you know uh, start doing your multiple choice questions your question bank when to start preparation for may attempt okay so for may you will be having a three or four question i mean uh uh months so it totally depends on person to person three months i would say please give at least three months for your preparation if you think that your preparation is not that sufficient and you're not getting good marks in mocks so you will you will judge yourself by mocks if you're not getting good marks in mocks then you can um literally um extend your preparation time guys for plab oet is best option or ielts what experience do you suggest i as i mentioned in the session as well that i'll only suggest oet because oet is the best just give oet in one go and um, actually it's really interesting exam as well uh, i'm just going through the questions so what will gmc when will gmc release seats for plab 1 in 2024 so you can uh, either email gmc on their official website and they'll be able to give you the correct answer cuz i don't i do not want to give a wrong answer to that question can i book for plab 1 without passport ah uh, well uh that also it's better to ask gmc and i think yes you can book your plab 1 with your cnic as well can somebody give plab 1 during pg residency first year should i drop uh, should i drop plab pathway pakistani people please help or oh, why not i mean you can definitely give plab 1 during your pg residency it totally depends how you are going to manage can be book lab 1 without having passport okay that's already answered would you please elaborate on the effect of career gap for having gmc registration getting a job in uk i will come to uk with my husband as he got a job offer so i have to resign and come i haven't booked lab as well so it will take some time to complete my lab exams Okay, so the good news for you guys is uh, career gap really does not matter. I know so many of my colleagues who had like five years, ten years, fifteen years of career gap, and they're still working in the NHS. So it really does not matter. So it's just a, and even scores does not really matters in PAP exam. You just need to pass the exams. 
but you need to prepare very well to pass the exams without a doubt can you please tell me how to study flap keys what are flap keys so flap keys is actually um, uh you know it's just like flappable either you study flappable or flap keys uh it's just the same i do not recommend going through flap keys honestly because it's just probably wasting time going through so many resources it's just overrated go through flappable and go through it nicely okay and if you want to add on a resource or you want to upgrade your knowledge and you want to be a bit more knowledgeable and you want to uh you know is the all all tricky question 10 to 20% tricky question as well then you can go for med revisions but flap keys um i do not really suggest going for that but it's good it depends on person to person if you are very much comfortable with flap keys you like it and then you can totally go for it ma'am please i'm from ghana i booked flap for Feb, my visa may might be delayed. I want to cancel and book for a later date. How can I go about it? Book club for my Feb. Okay, so uh, did you book for club one or club two? Because if it's club one, then you do not need to travel. You can take it uh, in your home country probably. If you're traveling, then then uh, I think then you might need to rebook. It totally depends on your preparation. If you think that. you're really well prepared then go for it otherwise just do not go for it okay take care thank you so much